Welcome back to the More Than Capable Mompreneur Podcast. I'm Shannon Baker, a coffee-loving mompreneur that started as a virtual assistant and turned into a total systems geek. And I want to help you shift your mindset and embrace your worthiness while creating systems in your business so you can be more productive and build success on your own terms without the mom guilt. Are you loving that? Well, I hope you're ready for real conversations that will help you beat the perfectionist inside, rediscover your strengths and up-level your self-love in the mom cracks of time so you can stop letting fear hold you back because you are enough and you do enough. We are more than capable mompreneurs. So grab your cup of coffee, some sparkling water, or pour a glass of your favorite wine, and let's dive in. I cannot believe I have been a podcaster for a year. I mean, I felt like I just recorded episode 25, where I shared the lessons that I've learned with starting a podcast. And you can feel free to go back and listen to that one, because this episode is going to be like a part two, where I'm going to share some additional lessons that I've learned. But let me start by thanking you for listening. Without you taking me along while you exercise, drive, walk, do whatever it is that you do while listening to this podcast every week, it would not have been successful. And when I say success, I'm not talking about the number of times episodes have been downloaded because I determine success by other things like being listed in the top 202 podcast categories on Apple Podcasts pretty consistently. The consumption rate of the episodes, which is how long you've tuned into an episode, is 65% or more. And then the reviews and the feedback that I get from you, that has been so encouraging. Here are some of the messages. So many great topics that help you focus on what's important, when getting started in business and how to build a business with balance so it doesn't take over your life. Here's another one. Anyone who can make systems for my solopreneur business sexy is worth a listen. And one of my favorites, I raise my cup to you and say thank you for all that you share every week. Now, if you haven't left a review for the show, no worries. Please leave a rating and review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash more than enough. It's a great way for you to show love to this podcast and to help other busy women and mompreneurs find value in it as well. Now, when I started this leg of my journey about a year ago, I decided I was not going to settle for basics. So I made a pivot in my business and did a total rebrand. And that's when I launched this podcast as well. Now I focus on helping solopreneur women with service-based businesses create systems so they can scale their business with ease and achieve success on their own terms. All of this was made possible because I did so much internal work to make sure I built up confidence in myself, rediscovered my talents, and then I decided I was going to create success on my own terms. So let me tell you, since making this change last year, my business has flourished. And it's mostly because of this podcast. I've been able to connect with some amazing women who have been guests on the podcast. I've learned something from each and every one of them. And I hope that you have too. I've collaborated with a few of them by presenting at their virtual summits, being guests on their podcast. I've also been invited to do trainings and been invited to present at other summits, which has expanded my online community. In a matter of a year, I've grown so much as a business owner, and I'm sure that even more growth is coming and more is on the horizon for me. So I'm excited about all the possibilities. This podcast has been a huge part of the pivot that I made in my business And I'm pleased with the way that the business and the podcast has evolved over the past year. It's been instrumental in making everything happen. I just wish I had the courage to do it sooner. Now, in addition to the five lessons that I shared in episode 25, here are a few more lessons that I've learned this first year as a podcaster. Don't forget to do this your way. One of the lessons that I shared that I've learned in episode 25 is to do what works for you. This also applies to how often you publish and how you share your episodes. 
If you want to do seasons, then do seasons. If you want to publish once a week, do that. Twice a week, do that. No matter what you decide, you need to make that decision for yourself and then commit so you can be consistent. I mean, and then when it comes to social media, remember, you need to let people know that your episodes exist, but you don't have to be on every social media platform to do this. This goes across the board with social media. We need to show up where our audience is. So keep that in mind. Show up where your people are, share your content, and talk about your podcast episodes. If you only have time to provide great show notes that contain SEO-rich keywords, then do that. Remember, it's about what works for you. And if you can turn those show notes into a blog post and embed your episode for more traffic, then do it. If you have the time and space to use Pinterest consistently, then go for it. But if you can't do all of this, then don't and don't beat yourself up because you can't do it. Do not let anyone dictate where you need to show up. Now, I will share what has worked for me, but there's no pressure for you to do this. I consistently share episodes in my Facebook group on Instagram stories. I repurpose my content as posts on Instagram. I also share on LinkedIn. I link my episodes to my blog posts as show notes. And I recently started sending updates via emails to those who are subscribed to my podcast list. But again, no pressure for you to do all of this. It's taken me a year to be able to fully activate my podcast subscriber list. The key is to do what you can be consistent with and track your success. Otherwise, you're going to end up overwhelmed and give up. And there's enough that you have to do with putting on a podcast consistently as well. Don't put too much on your plate. This goes hand in hand with the next lesson I've learned. Keep things simple. There are so many pieces involved in hosting a podcast. And of course, there's a ton of advice about what you need to do when you have one. But here's the thing about this expert advice. And I say that in air quotes. All of it does not work for everyone. And again, you don't have to do all the things. The easiest way you can be consistent with your podcast episodes and being on social media so people know it exists is to create templates for your posts. And then all you have to do is update them every week. This hands down has been a huge time saver for me. Canva is a great tool that you can use to do this and you can use the free version. All you have to do each week is just copy the template over and over, update the name and episode number and download it and post it. Easy peasy. And remember, you get to decide what type of podcaster you're going to be. So you decide and just be consistent. Now, in order for you to be consistent, you know you need to have a process. You aren't getting off that easy. Now, this isn't a lesson for me on one hand, but I have seen why a process is important, especially when you have guests on your show. Not only does this save you time, but when you have guests, it makes things a lot easier for them as well. And it makes you look professional. If you only do solo episodes, you still need to have a process. It needs to include a checklist of all the pieces that you need for each episode. I organize my episode content in Trello. So as I create episodes, I create a card for each. And then the checklist is automatically added so that I don't miss any of the pieces that I need. And when it comes to guest chats, my process includes a link to my Acuity account so they can schedule their chat. And then Acuity automatically collects the information that I need from the guests. And all I do is send them a link in my email message, which, by the way, is a template in my Gmail account. And I just customize a sentence or two for each guest. Now, on the back end, there's some automation I have in place that pulls their information that they submit in Acuity and creates a Trello card for their episode. And then as I move that card through my podcast workflow, checklists are automatically added so that I can complete the needed task based on where the episode is in my production process. And let me just say, without my checklist, I would miss a lot of steps. 
Now, if you like to set up this type of automation for your podcast, you know I can help you with that. And I would love to help you get this in place so that you have the time that you need to focus on putting out quality podcast episodes for your audience. All you have to do is book a 60 minute clarity call with me and we can make out the workflow for you and get the automation in place that you need. So that's it. Those are the additional lessons that I've learned. There are so many more, but I'm not going to overwhelm you or bore you with all of that. But I do want to thank you so much for joining me for this milestone episode. Again, you can find a link to episode 25 where I share some other lessons I've learned in podcasting. There's also the link to my calendar for you to schedule that clarity call in the show notes as well. And if you enjoy listening to this episode or the podcast in general, please make sure you leave me a rating and a review at ratethispodcast.com slash more than enough. Now, after listening to this episode, if you can relate to one of the lessons I've learned, please let me know. DM me on Instagram or take a screenshot and tag me at the underscore Shannon Baker. I would love to hear from you. And remember, you are more than enough. So until next time, keep calm and streamlined.